and the proper decision might be made. By the way, they, they said I should also explain to you that in South Africa, that seems like a mature market. There's significant, there are significant opportunities in that country when it comes to cinemas in the townships, particularly, um, particularly in the black dominated areas. There are not a lot of cinemas in those areas. And as such, they want to have, they, they believe that a summit like this is very important to see what, what other cinema companies will be willing you know, to bring cinemas into those communities. They also wrote out their stories, they are big, big uh, uh, fans of Nollywood, for example, uh, because they see rich South African and Nigerian and these stories. So they, they sent their wages to us, or just to make it with the short notice that we had. Like our chairman of the CAN said, he had a call on Monday, I think that was from yesterday. We had to put this together very quickly. Um, Julian had a tight schedule, so we had to put this together very quickly. Um, so that's on number one. Number two, I, I, let me just look at the that we're not here to talk about streaming, we're here to talk about cinema summit. Um, I will focus on that. Um, but let me also make it very clear that we do not feel threatened. We look at the film industry as an ecosystem. Uh, and we believe that the streamers have played a huge role in, in spotlighting the film industry. And we salute their, their courage, we salute their interests and their investments, frankly. And we, in fact, if I, I will tell you that we have empirical evidence to suggest in 2020, 2021, that streaming actually impacted cinema positively. Because a lot of people who stuck at home were able to see the significant evolution of our, you know, storytelling, um, over, you know, in, on, uh, for, for a long period while we were sat at home. And in 2021, we really saw a burst on, you know, to the stream for black and Nigerian content. So we do not feel threatened. And um, does that mean we're complacent? Of course we must. Does that mean we will not be challenged and we do not have our own fair share of obstacles? Of course not. We, 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 we have, we are in the Nigerian system, as well, talking from Nigeria, we've had our fair share, we had to also react. But we're, we're also in an era where after the pandemic, I don't know if you look at the facts and, and the figures, we've posted the two highest crossing films of all time. So whether it's on Mogetto or Buka Street, we've had that. We've also had a record breaking year um, in 2022 of 7 billion box office. And a lot of times I've been looking for the Thank you very much. Thank you. I believe the opportunity to sometimes just set the record straight um, about the numbers and the narrative. And I understand, I understand that we just have a responsibility to, you know, be unbiased and be fair about their reportage. But I think that we also just need to also give the right context of where we're coming from and the challenges that we face. Um, as the CEA and we, we, we were mandated or we were obligated to share our thoughts of the place. But it's also a cinema sector that has retail revenues, that has advertising revenues, and is easily worth about 15 billion naira a year. You know, with the immense potential to grow that number. So those are some of the things that we're not only able to always share, but we have to also demonstrate that it's a very, very resilient, very, very, very active, you know, and complementary business in, in the in the film industry. So we are not, um, in, in your words, we are not threatened, um, but we are not complacent. Um, we are not complacent because you can see us here. We are talking about forging the right kind of relationships and right kind of partnerships, right kind of discussions. We are talking about finding Africa-wide solutions, not made in the West, not you know made in textbooks. What works for us and our continent. That's what they're really for.